Welcome to HBO Lax. This is Lizzie Pace. And this is Catherine Dudas. Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> I think, yes, this will be coming out on Halloween. Yes. It is the eve of Halloween now. Ha- Perhaps even scarier. Yes, actually. The veil Some is thin. Say. The veil is thin. The veil is thin, <laughs> as, as we all say. Uh, Catherine and I, we are the two foremost television experts. And right now, we are recapping White Lotus, season two, episode one. Oh. And for the record, I know it is called The White Lotus, but that feels weird to me. So it I will be weird. saying White Lotus. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Mike I feel White. like that's not the nomenclature. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. You know what? Yeah. I feel. We of course we are this is HBO Lax, okay? This Yes. We don't exactly. need a definite we drop article here. Our yeah. Yes. Wow, I uh, love that you knew what it was called. I think so. I it could be indefinite. Also, Catherine is in Eastern Europe right now and told me she's reading a very intense book. I'm having and so I much forget fun. That you love history. I love history. I'm in Bratislava right now. Shout out to all the Slovaks listening. Um, and I, uh, I'm having a really good time. Yeah, I'm reading. Uh, I, I love history. I'm just going to museums, eating half an edible and just staring uh, at things way too long. And I'm having, having a blast doing a solo journey. That sounds like the dream. <laughs> it is the dream. But it was really, and it was also, oh, that's why I have so many things to talk about with this oh, episode. Oh, yes. I'm <laughs> hoping there was so you'll many give moments. us a little European flair. Yeah, well, this. there was so many moments with the assistant where I was like, oh, yeah, and like, like being, like doing a vacation alone because I'm doing it alone. I was like, yeah, this, this all checks out. Like her alone in the hotel room. I'm like, that's a dream. Like, I was like, yeah, you t- <laughs> take a break. Um, that is yeah. <laughs> so funny. And then him try, and then her trying to be like, hello, or like, thank you. And it because ta- every time it's funny because when I was in Vienna, I like studied German phrases in preparation for this trip because I was like, I don't want to be an annoying American just speaking English. But everyone, most people uh-huh. who approach me, like even if I'm going to a restaurant, they talk to me in English because I think they just know before I even say anything. They're like, uh, table for one. I'm, the like, vibe. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. I was like, wait, they I, knew you were alone and American? Well, I came in alone. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll get. Yeah, alone and American. But that, you look like a sad, lonely like American. <laughs> American travel. I was like Eins, and they're like one, one. <laughs> um, v gets. Uh, All like, you need to know is Prost, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. We have a new intro sequence. It's some sort of like seemingly generic Renaissance painting of like pastoral images and people. And then it gets sexy. There's a lot of different types of sex. There is a lady making out with a swan, notably. Mm, notably. <laughs> and violence. Sex and violence. So, Which is what we love about White Lotus, baby. That's what we've come to love yes. and expect. And great dialogue. And the creator, Mike White, wrote and directed this episode. All hail. We start with the slow... Zoom beach scene on this blonde lady. And she is overhearing these two American ladies near her on chaises on chaises, chaises, chaises Mm. on the beach. (laughs) And I learned from Twitter that these are Angelina and Cara from Survivor 37. What? They were on Survivor. They were on Survivor? Yes. That is okay because he was on Survivor. Oh my God, they did a great yes. job. They killed it. They, <laughs> I know natural talent. Natural talent. I love it. <laughs> I was like, this feels like an awkward. This is. I was like, that's what I loved about this first scene. This is why Mike White does it so well because every these scenes feel exactly like it would be when you're just talking to random strangers on vacation. They're like, yeah, hi. Yes. How can we finish this conversation? Have we say all the things? <laughs> yeah. And this woman. This blonde lady, Daphne Sullivan, is like, I'm about to leave. I'm about to do my last swim, but you both are going to love it. And she's like, "You're it's so romantic, you're going to die. They're going to have to drag you out of here, foreshadowing. (laughs) Yeah. And she goes on this swim. And this is the first part that I was like, this is a little unrealistic. She has this perfect blowout. 
her hair. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she just puts it in the water. I felt I the same way, Lizzie. I was like, my heart was... <laughs> it's like when you when you watch someone like hold, like, I don't know, a, some something over the edge. Or you're like, oh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't drop it. Yeah, it felt like yet. my like Elle Woods moment. I was <laughs> like, she wouldn't. <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah, that was the scary but... part. <laughs> I'm like, wasn't that the whole point of the scene? (laughs) That was what the foreshadowing was. She's crazy. (laughs) She's unhinged. Uh, She (laughs) She goes. Obviously, she's the killer. Uh, She feels something. She has swam into a dead body and starts screaming for help. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a shark. She doesn't try to drag the body, but I guess. She was pretty sure it was dead. Maybe it was gross. <laughs> Maybe it was gross. Really You're know. right. Maybe it was gross. Um, so she is dressed. <laughs> she, she, she runs out. Um, and then we get our uh, amazing um, head of the hotel, hotel manager, I guess we call, um, of this season. Yes. Um, just like a boss ass bitch, Valentina. Um, and um, her, uh, you know, second in command is like, yeah, I guess drowned. Uh, <laughs> And then her immediate response. I think response, this man's name is Rocco. Okay, Rocco. Rocco okay. Valentino. Um, and she's like, oh, good. It's not on hotel property. <laughs> yeah, so funny. And then he says, Salvatore says they found other bodies. And she's like, how many dead guests are there? And he doesn't know a few. So there's more than one body this season. That's how we up those stakes, We see baby. them carry one off of the beach. Mm, what? That's how we up those stakes. Last season, one body. This season, who knows how many? I love that. Who knows? Who knows? Three probably. Three probably, yeah. <laughs> that's a few. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a few. And we get this Chiron one week earlier. And we see people on this fancy, apparently, transport boat. And there are two young couples, one of whom are lovey-dovey, one of whom are fighting. Mm-hmm. And... We will learn that this is Cameron and Daphne, and then Harper and Ethan. Harper and Ethan. Harper. Um, and we see Cameron like winks at Harper while he's sweet talking his lady, and then we see Christopher, not Christopher. I know it's gonna be really Dom, hard. Dominic. Dom. Dom. Um, I know. It's so uh, it's so fun seeing Christopher. I I just for those of you who are in the know, Lizzie just did a rewatch of The Sopranos. I just did a first watch of The Sopranos, um, on our own separately. This is how much we love HBO. We um, how much we love HBO yes. Max. So yeah, he is Christopher. It was for, all research for this. It was all research <laughs> for this. So he's he's on our minds. <laughs> We're very excited. He is there with his son and his father. And then we see our our main repeat character. We see Tanya, played by the amazing Jennifer Coolidge. And she is lying on this chaise, having a boat man help her. <laughs> and everything she we does see this you girl. Laugh. This, yeah. <laughs> we see this young girl inside looking maybe sick. And then we see two Italian women. One is listening to headphones and the other grabs it out. And she, But she doesn't want to talk because Massimo has a new girl. This is Mia. And this is Luci, who, or Lucia, who says, don't think of him. The boat is here. So they're waiting for this boat. And then we see Valentina, the hotel manager, leading everyone and greeting the boat. She's got this pink suit on. It is, you know... We had this amazing hotel manager season one, so it's like, how are you gonna beat that? She is very interesting. She was so interesting. I was so very excited. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, how are they gonna do this character in like a different way? But uh, this is a great Italian vibe. This actress is so good. Um, she, yes. yeah, she's she's so funny. We get a lot of berating of. <laughs> we see right away she's gonna be a tough tough boss. Um, and then we see our two Italian women um, talking, watching the boat, looking for who is the guy um, that, uh, you know, that she's waiting for. Um, and they, they also, you know, uh, talk about if, if old men can get hard, which we do find out later they can. 
Um, they, Valentino, <laughs> Valentino against our will, <laughs> against our will, um, it introduces uh, or introduces herself to them um, and uh, says, "You are quite old." <laughs> Too. Yeah, I can't believe you made it from LA. You're quite old. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, we got from a tiny tray. We got some glass of glasses of prosecco, um, and uh, they uh, they head in. This conversation between the two young Italians continue, and they're like kind of talking around this, and they're like, "Oh well, the two, the hot ones are with their wives. That can't be the person." And Lucci's like, "Well, it wouldn't be the first time." And Mia says, men are so disappointing Hello. regarding being with their wives. <laughs> and we see this character, Cameron, his bag is lost. As Valentina says, never transfer through Rome. And then she says, if your bag will arrive, if you believe in miracles, <laughs> which I laughed out loud at. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, and then Harper does not want to do a toast, which is such a funny moment of, uh, yeah, Cameron, um, Daphne want to do like a toast and, and Harper's like, uh, yeah, eventually takes it, um, which is this funny little moment. Oh, Audrey Plaza is so good. Um, and, yes. and yeah, so. Oh and my then, God. Audrey Plaza is amazing. Oh, she's so good. I cannot wait to see what she does this season. Oh my gosh. Same. <laughs> Um, they comment um, on the Italian women comment on the back, how many bags Tanya has. Uh, and Tanya's like, whenever I stay at the White Lotus, I have such a memorable time. Which honestly, I feel like Mike White wrote this just for the trailer. He's like, I just need a line yes. like this, <laughs> just for the trailer. <laughs> That's how I felt when Daphne did the line that was like, you're going to die. They're going to have to drag you out of here. Yeah. <laughs> um, we see Tanya have this conversation about how she used to be a petal and worked her way up to a blo- the blossom circle. I guess this is the membership levels of White Lotus. I guess so. Very specific. And Valentina says, your husband's already here. And she's like, good. He's not responding to my texts. Then we get beautiful shots of this gorgeous resort, gorgeous Italy. Um, makes me I have the travel bug now, so it makes me want to go. Um and- I know. Wait, <laughs> Catherine, we see one of the sex workers is eating a lollipop. Is you're in Europe? Is that yeah a trend? That is a trend. Yeah, it's everywhere. Lollies. Yes, and and then I started eating a lollipop, and people are like, "Are you? Are you can I pay you?" Uh, and then it Ooh. all got confusing. Um, <laughs> um, we uh, head in Daphne and Cameron's room. Are we? All the guests are checking out the rooms. And we get a story of what the this little a head, a a head statue, uh, what the meaning of it is, um, which will be, I'm sure. This was my didn't read the book moment of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Tessa <Tenshita> Di Moro. <laughs> Moore came here a long time ago and seduced a local girl, and then she found out he had a wife and children, so she cut his head off. And we see this head statue a couple times through this episode, kind of like a mystical object, I Mm -hmm. think, that might be recurring. I love it. It's crazy. And Daphne jokes, it's a warning to husbands about screwing around. Yeah. Which. Mm. mm. Um, And then he shows the adjoining room and Harper, and he's like, oh, in case you want to enjoy the rooms. And Harper's like, oh, we won't need that, (laughs) which I laughed at. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we, we won't be using that. Uh, you know, it you is know. such a tense dynamic between the two Oof. couples. I was just like, I just want to see more of this. Also, we have to talk about this. The whole cast is so hot. Oh, they're so hot. Uh, they're it's amazing. They do. Uh, it's fantastic. Honestly, they should all just hook up. Come on, just all kiss and make up. I, I think they might. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're gonna see that. Don't that, those rooms adjoin? I don't know. That's true. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we find out that the grandfather, son, son, grandson is Bert, Dom, and Albie, and they are here because they are Sicilian. Oh, they find this out because the grandfather, Bert, is harassing the hotel lady, Isabella, about her heritage. (sighs) This was... (laughs) This was a very relatable moment for me. My grandfather always used to ask where people were from. Oh, really? <laughs> Not just women, but like everyone. <laughs> That's very cute. Where was he from? Actually, he was from Milan. Oh, 
That's yeah. great. Oh, okay. That's so, yeah. That that feels like a very, uh, yeah, Italian man thing to do, which is, yeah, can be very endearing. In this case, um, harassing, um, which is, I love, <laughs> <Yes>. yeah, <laughs> you know, beautiful hazel eyes, a uh, wonderful smile. Um, and uh, Dom, uh, you know, shares a look with his son, like, oh my God, grandpa's being a creep. And then ushers out the Milan lady <laughs> and slams the door in his face in her face and uh his dad is like what the fuck and Dom's like you're harassing a woman and I'm like wow it's so refreshing to just have that call this is what Mike White does really well just like in any other show this would go unsaid but in a in a White Lotus mm. episode like he just calls him out he's like you're <laughs> you're harassing a woman <laughs> he's like no i'm not it is such a tense moment i'm like he also starts this farting storyline during it oh yeah and i <laughs> usually think farts are hilarious uh but there was something about this farting while he's harassing the woman that really disturbed Felt me sinister. <laughs> sinister farting sinister farting <laughs> I agree with you. It was uncomfortable. I don't find farts hilarious, so this was double upsetting. <laughs> oh no, I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's for okay. What you've gone through. <laughs> uh, the farter Bert is trying to get this hotel lady Isabella to be their translator as they visit the town that uh, his grandfather was from, mm-hmm. where no one will speak English, and he blames the purse that go. <laughs> In the hallway, we get this moment between Dom and Albie, father-son moment, and Dom's like, why are we doing this? And Albie's like, it's a nice thing. <laughs> Dom's like, okay, I have a migraine. <laughs> He's <laughs> I know. not spending time with his son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Albie seems disappointed. He's going to go by the pool. It's sad. Um, we cut to a shot of a white lotus floating on the water. Um, nice mm. transition. And then... Um, we have we see Tanya uh meet see her it's her husband, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they met in the first season, yes. Greg. But now they are married. So there's been some some time jump. Yes. Or not the first movie, the first season. Yes, yes. the first yes. Um they met at the other resort. Um and then she asks him, she's like the first thing she says is like, Why aren't you uh responding to my texts? Uh, and he's like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't flare up at work. So immediately we're like, okay, this guy sucks. And then he's pissed that he's like, why did you bring your assistant to a vacation with your husband? So he's upset. He's more upset than you would. This is, this is suspicious to me. And I, cause I was like, well, you're more upset mm. than this might be. I'm going to call this out right now that he is, he was planning something where he needs her alone and he needs no, I don't know, no witnesses. This is my conspiracy. Maybe he Ooh. wants to kill Tanya. I don't know. Because he was like, he was really upset that he said she brought the assistant. They um, don't seem to have a good uh, good thing going. Nope. <laughs> uh, and Tanya's like, oh, yeah, I'll get rid of the assistant. And then she talks to Portia, the assistant. And Portia's like, okay, so see you in a week. And Tanya's like, no, lay low. Don't come out of the room. So she hasn't sent, she needs her, but. Yes. Is like you need to be hiding from my husband. Yes, love this. Love so this. much comedic fodder. King so Thomas, much a premise such as this. I was gonna say this is such a good setup. This is great. This whole pilot is just full of amazing setups. Yes, we see. We cut to the Harper and Ethan room, and they have this conversation where we get a lot of the backstory. Harper's like, you got rich recently. Now you're friends with this guy, Cameron. And Harper makes him switch sides of the bed. She complains about the couple being very touchy-feely, that it feels performative. Mm-hmm. And she's like, who does that? And Ethan's like, happy people. <laughs> I know. I was like, well, <laughs> Harper. <laughs> this was a little sad to me. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, someone's love language isn't touch. Uh <laughs> 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 yeah right. Um, we have. This I want to know what her love language is. I, know. <laughs> I think it's like revenge. Revenge. <laughs> um, yeah, she's upset about the I bed, love the bedsides. I love it. Like she's. It's a funny moment. Of, she's just like, well, yeah. He's like, does it matter? You want to sleep in the bed? She's like, well, yeah. I want to sleep on my side of the bed. <laughs> she knows what she wants. Um, that was funny to me. Um, yeah, and so she make her makes a prediction. She makes her own prediction. It's like she's on this podcast. Um, that that Cameron is going to ask him. Yeah, ask him for for some sort of money. 
or investment um, at some point in the trip. As Yeah, as the reason they invited them on the trip. Mm-hmm. So that is why they are there. We see Portia alone in the hallway. We see Valentina answer the phone in the lobby, and she's telling Rocco to make her tea, and she sees Lucci and Mia, the sex workers, and she runs after them. She doesn't want them in the hotel. So funny. And I'm excited about this. Like, <laughs> they're like, we're here to meet a guest, an American named Tom Cruise. <laughs> and Valentina's like, guests only. Antonio's going to escort you out. And she's like, not in my hotel. And she says, at least I don't have sex for money. And Lucci's like, who would have sex with you? So <laughs> funny. Yes. Yeah, I think a lot of fun things is going to come out of this. Um, but yeah, she's just like, this is not in my hotel. This is not. This is a nice hotel, not for hookers. Um, and uh, then we cut to a scene with Dom, not Christopher, Dom. Um, a great <laughs> scene with just one take. And a slow zoom in with when while he's on the phone with his wife or his, or his ex-wife, I'm assuming. We're finding out lots of information. Um, he's like, I wish you were here. And his wife, Abby, is like, or like she's like, fuck off immediately. Um, so, yeah. Do you know whose voice this is? No, who? I saw it on Twitter. It's Laura Dern. No way. That's yes. amazing. You know what? That Yeah, because I guess you can get. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that. She did a great job. Um, right? I mean, she's very good at this type of role. But we yeah, basically see this like phone call where we only see him. And he's like, they were supposed to go on this trip together. Mm-hmm. She's like, fuck off. He says his daughter's not answering the calls. And she's like, well, she doesn't want to talk to you. Ten years of your bullshit. And he's like, what? You're telling her kids my secrets and she's like i don't keep secrets so like something horrible has gone on in their marriage Mm -hmm. the kids are mad and he's like albie's here he's not upset and she's like yes he is he's a sweet man Mm. and she's like she's like where she's like i don't know where he got it from not you um and he's like i'm sorry i'm sorry for a lot of f-bombs too a lot of f-bombs and she's like i still love you and she's like shut the fuck up (laughs) Which is so, um, like, and she's just, yeah, the end, the end of this phone call when she's just like, yeah, because he's like, I'll let you know how it goes. And then she's just like, I don't care. Yeah, Stop I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> it was really funny, really well done, but also sad. And like, and also and he's just like, it's a really good performance by him too because it's just this like you really do feel for him even though i'm sure this abby i'm sure she's justified in what she's saying i'm sure he's he deserves all of this i but feel like there were other sex workers that's I'm my sh- guess i'm sure <laughs> we cut to the pool and portia's on the phone with her friend um and uh saying something very relatable she's like i've just been doom scrolling for three years so i guess this is oh this is post pandemic in this world i'm assu- um which i didn't even i just thought of now because so, so so but the the first season was pre-pandemic so maybe like three years two yeah three years ish i want to say they filmed the first season during the pandemic oh i think you're right they might have i think you're right and i think it's um, yeah so it makes sense that, that was set pre i think we're post-pandemic which i that's interesting to be like we're in the real world um and portia's like upset she's like i just want to be thrown around by some hot italian guy but pasta makes me bloated <laughs> which is funny <laughs> um and then alvi comes and sits next to her yes <laughs> um alvi is very cute and sits next to her and they they uh exchange looks and start um yeah uh and then we uh cut to a scene with the couples at a little double date Kevin says i know someone who knows you a friend from law school uh, Harper and Harper says, "Tell him I said hi and congrats on not getting disbarred." So funny! I, I was like a zinger right off the bat. Great at parties. Great at parties. <laughs> um, she is asked what she does, and she is a lawyer for people who have been wrongfully terminated. Um, and we get a face from Cameron that she calls out right away, which I did love. And he seems to have had some interesting, you know, on the other, he's probably, he's on the other side of that on, in his company, <laughs> internal investigations, yeah. which is funny, huge waste of money. And she's like, well, they're not all. And she's, you know, she's silently, you know, exactly. And her, her husband's looking at her like, uh-oh. 
Um, yeah, he's like, we're dealing with bogus claims lately. She says, not all bogus. And, and he's says, like, of oh, course no. not at all. And he's like, no, Har- Harper. And this is what people do. Like, no, this is, Mike White is so good because he just like gets the nuances of how people talk in these situations. And I love it because mm-hmm. no, so many shows just don't get it. Like, this is my big... Yeah. Just so many shows don't get it, how people actually talk. And this is just, this is why he just sets them apart. Um, and like the oof, the awkwardness, and there's just so much there. Um, we cut back to the pool. Uh, and Alvi and Portia start talking. You know, um, he asks her if she's okay. And she's just like, <laughs> she's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just dealing with them. this whole scene. I was like, come on, Portia. He's like, talk, talk to the cute guy. Just we'll stop. Come on. I wanted her to just like carpe diem. She was just, she was, but then she eventually did. But I was rooting for her. I was like, you know, flirt. <laughs> I will say though, I didn't like how he, the whole Chico State and Stanford thing. I was like, girl, I was like, you're, you're ruining your shirt. Sh- you're making, you're, you're ruining your shot here. Like, I don't know. I feel Wait, like. You think if- she should have hit her college? No, 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 no. Sorry. I'm not saying this right. The way she said it, because he, he was like, oh, cool. And she was like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, clearly to be like, I know I went to a much worse school than you. And I'm like, this is uncomfortable. I was like, flirt better. <laughs> I was like, just own it. Own that you went to, who cares? Like, no one cares what school you went to. And like, also it was weird that he didn't. How should she say it? She just like, I yeah. went to Chico State. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, she wants to get laid. This is not is how you get good? laid. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm like, yeah. I was like, he's um, being nice. I'm like, no one cares. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> we then see Grandpa Bert being a cock block fainting across the patio. Oh my God. Such and a cock so block. so their, their convo ends and Albie runs after him calling him no, no. Which I thought was cute. Portia's just very concerned. She like keeps calling him a cute old man, which I think is funny. And I think really, um, I think done on purpose to be like some, some girls sometimes are like, oh, old men are so cute. But it's like, no, he's like a dirty old man. <laughs> he's like a, horny. yeah, she says it a couple times. She does. She's like, maybe she lost her, but she hadn't talked to him at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So know. she, she has, it's, it was interesting. Cause I'm like, he's, he, he would fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he then he eyes her. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and Albie rushes him away. Yeah, uh, We see Ta- Tanya, Tonya, Tanya getting her makeup Tanya. ready. She's drinking some wine. She's great. She's in this lingerie, oh. and she tries to seduce her husband by rubbing his foot on her titty. <laughs> I do not like, do, don't like foot. Is this... Legs. <laughs> is that a good first move? <laughs> I will say, in ca- I guess yeah, it depends ca- on the person. <laughs> I guess it, it does. It does. <laughs> um, he, uh, you know, has swamp crotch, so he, he goes away, and she's like, "Gross." The, she's so gross. Um, she's like, "He's always thinking of me." I just love this character. I thought that was hilarious. She's so she's funny. Like this eternal optimist slash dissociate her <laughs> everything she does is so i've laughed every t- every laugh out loud moment i had was was jennifer coolidge moment it was so i'm she's just so funny um uh we cut to the couples uh talking about sleeping pills and then harper's like you guys don't have sleeping pills she's like what <laughs> which is so funny and she's like <laughs> and daphne's like oh what, you have trouble sleeping like work stuff and Harper's like, yeah, in the world. <laughs> and like things are going on. And then Daphne's like, what do you mean? What's going on? And this is like, yeah. <laughs> this, this is funny because it also feels like two parts of the internet talking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like people just seeing completely different versions of the news. Yes. Uh, Daphne says the world's not ending. We don't even watch the news anymore Mm -hmm. and Cameron says we're over it it's a polarizing our society apocalyptic but we can't obsess I mean we donate we vote and Daphne's like I voted didn't I and he's like I don't know (laughs) yeah he calls her out he's like no he's like I don't think you did Uh, (laughs) um yeah this was very interesting I yeah I feel like I fluctuate between these two couples day to day I'm like one day I'm Daphne and Cameron and the other day I'm Harper and Ethan does anyone, does that anyone? I mean, I feel like when she's saying that she is watching Dateline, I'm like, I relate <laughs> yeah. to this. I mean, not not like 
the violent but the tv aspect oh yeah the binge yeah the thing because like some days i'm like I'm yeah like, i have hobbies like i have housewives i have yes i have, I have farm, hobbies i have white lotus i have bachelor so many <laughs> hobbies a lot of different hobbies <laughs> very active <laughs> very active in my hobbies yeah no i think it's so because i felt that well this was so this is why i love this is because you know I feel like we've all felt this way we like I doom scrolled and then I have to be like from my I, my roommates had an intervention with me during the COVID because I was constantly watching about doom news scrolling about doom scrolling of like they could hear in my in my room NBC and CNN and they were like you gotta stop <laughs> they're like you're going insane and I was like I'm I was Harper in this situation I was like you're right so then I'd take a break and be a Daphne and then now I'm back to being a I have you know, also you go back and forth. had my doom scrolling pointed out to me by someone who could see all my likes on Twitter <laughs> they were like oh I can see when you're doom scrolling <laughs> so yeah. I'll pop up I'm like oh god <laughs> and then some days you just have to binge <laughs> um so this was yeah it was very fun i love a good binge she said which was so fun <laughs> I oh like- <laughs> yeah they they finally connect on ted lasso except for harper of course i don't watch, I don't ted, watch lasso. ted lasso that oh the ted lasso thing was so funny because i feel like people have had that exact conversation i love i love mike white so much um because <laughs> oh it's so good um oh that's great I love a binge. I love love a, love a binge. <laughs> love that. That's how she ends this altercation. Cameron ends it. He just takes his shirt off. <laughs> yeah. And then Harper and Cameron go upstairs, and Cameron is gonna Harper's gonna lend uh, his Ethan shorts to him and get some sun sunscreen. We have an awkward moment with Ethan and Daphne at the end of this scene. I'll be, I want to see how their friendship grows, or I want I want to see what they're like when they if they ever talk um we cut to an upsetting sex scene <laughs> uh, uh, my upsetting sex scene of yes, the week we do. <laughs> uh, i love that <laughs> she's just like it seems like she's in a lot of pain and like oh my god she shoves him off of her, says she must have been disassociated, that she was seeing all these faces of men with effeminate hairstyles, and your eyes were shark eyes completely dead. And he says, you know how to pump a guy up. You're making my dick soft. Making my... <laughs> with your dissociating. Oh, my God. Tanya, She and this... admits that she took something called bonine before the flight. He complains oh. about how he's not finishing, and then he yells at her for eating all the hotel's free macaroons. I was so sad. What a dick. What a fucking dick. And he's just like, she's just like, I thought I only had three. And he's, oh, it's so sad. And all the Prosecco. He's like, you're not going to lose weight if you keep doing that. I wanted to die. I was like, kill Greg. Kill Greg. Uh <laughs> I was also um, okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Being the, one of the murders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that point. <laughs> um, uh, so we cut, and then we cut to Harper and Cameron in and their scene. room. And uh, he tells her, she was in the bathing suit. He tells her that, like, oh, he, I'm so happy he found someone. Like, he didn't really date a lot of girls. Um, and yeah, the like, little subtle oh. dig there. He never yeah. brought around girls. <laughs> so weird. Um, you know, it means a lot. Like, ew. Um, and uh, then she goes into the bathroom and uh, looking for some sunscreen. And in the background, in this, in the mirror, we see Cameron just change. We see Cameron's hot, hot, uh, <laughs> hot, hot butt. Uh, and uh, yeah, gets gets full on naked. And I think this is some... we see his butt. And we see something else that I Do we didn't see notice, dick? but I saw via Twitter. Yes, I think it's a prosthetic, but Cameron oh, completely it. disrobing right behind Harper was my horniest moment of the week. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was also my horniest moment of the week. And he, yeah, it was... Um, it was really, and I obviously, I, okay, so here's my question. Is Harper complete, Harper's mm-hmm. just completely freaked out, right? She's just, or she's completely weirded out. She's not at all, she wasn't checking him out. Was she checking him out? Was it both? I feel like it was both. Okay. She's like pretending to not see. I mean, she could have like, 
she could have she I looked guess. a couple times <laughs> like she i mean he's up. like he's a very attractive man he is that's true I think so maybe objectively. yeah it's true so i was wonder i was like i, I wonder if this is foreshadowing them maybe but it's like a, i don't know it's a, a weird it's, power you know what this is on that line this is on like you're like is he trying to like do some weird move with her is he just like a naked guy yes. I, I don't know yeah this feels like very um he knows what he's doing. Like, in, I think he he definitely knows yeah. what he's doing, but it's definitely it's it would be hard to call out, um, yes, which is exactly. a, which is sneaky, uh, relatable, <laughs> relatable. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we then see this conversation between Alby and Dom, and Abby is like, "Hey, Alby is like, Dad, no, no, fell. He could have a concussion." Someone should sleep with him tonight. And Dom's like, great idea. Put him in your room. I have work stuff. Going to be up all night. Dinner at eight. And then slams the door in his son's <laughs> Jeez, Poor Alby. He's so cute. I love him. Um, yeah. He, and he's, she's looking. He's like being so sweet and being like, hey, Grandpa might have a concussion. Like looking out for him. So nice. Um, we cut to Lucci and Mia. Are their names? Yes. Oh, Lucci and Mia. Mia asked Lucci, how did you like find this guy? And she's just like, on the internet, this guy gave me 50 euros for a picture of my feet who DM me on Instagram. She's like, so that's when I realized. She realized she found the OnlyFans culture. Um, and then she looks um, Mia up and down and says, we should do a threesome. Uh, we can charge him double. And Mia's like, no, no, no. And I was like, interesting. Um, and she's like, I'm still in love with, with my guy. Um, and so, so we see Lucci trying to corrupt, uh, corrupt is maybe the wrong word, but trying to, to, yeah, bring Mia into, into the biz. Absolutely trying to bring her in. Yes. She's <laughs> like, get it from them while you're young. You need money to make music. I mean, she's really, she's pushing it. Yes. And Mia's like, I'll go with you, but no threesome. Hmm. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They sneak around the valet. We see this child peeing fountain, and we <laughs> cut to the dining room. There's mm. a man playing the piano in a sparkly jacket, performing. We see Lucci and Mia in the bathroom, and Lucci is putting makeup on Mia, and Mia says, I look like a whore. And she's like, exactly. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. She's like, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going for. <laughs> That's <the> <laughs> That, that is the vibe. Is the vibe. <laughs> it's giving whore. <laughs> uh, we see Tanya and Greg enter, and Tanya sees Portia is sitting at this restaurant, and she goes over to Portia and says, I said to stay in the room. Greg is going to flip the fuck out, and she puts... Portia's menu in front of her face, and this was my eat the rich moment of the week. <laughs> I this love is that. my new award. I love that. That's a great. That's a great new award. Uh, yeah, this was very funny, and she it was so sad because Portia's like, I need to eat. <laughs> um, yes, I just when there's like a uh, a power a power dynamic, and then just like mm-hmm. it just reminded me of when Scott Disick put a $20 bill down a man's throat in a car- keeping up with the Kardashians episode when he was wasted. Oh my God. I did not know that was that happened. <sighs> Jesus. I had that energy to me. <laughs> Ugh, it gross. was disturbing. It yeah. stuck with me. Yeah. Eat the rich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we have, uh, we see the grandfather is now hitting on the waiter. What's your heritage? <laughs> Titana, Sicilian. Are you married? Dom's like, can we put an order in? I need a drink. <laughs> and Bert is like, flirting is the pleasure of life. And Dom mm-hmm. is like, you're 80. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get this dazed and confused um, homage. I get older and older, but the women I desire remain young. Yes. And he's like, you can relate to that. Get, like you know, uh, shading his son, who I'm assuming, we're just assuming, yeah, cheated on his wife with a younger woman, um, and then Albie interrupts, maybe trying to change the subject, asking if can you still get hard, <laughs> <laughs> which is so funny. I love that, it, and it, I, I was so because like it, it's 
And then Dom's like, why are you asking him that? And Alfie's like, no, 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 come on, do you jerk off? <laughs> um, it and- is like, I'm going to deflect and make a, such a weird question that people forget they were arguing. <laughs> yes, I was like, that's actually a really good strategy. It also shows that like generational differences, like you don't have to be, I feel like, ugh, stay with me on this, but I feel like you don't, uh, Gen Z, you don't have to be, I feel like, okay, the grandpa's generation, uh-huh. if you're going to ask that kind of question, you have to be a certain kind of person. But in Gen Z, you can be like a sweet boy like Albie and like still feel like you can ask that question because Gen Z is much more comfortable. Like our generation is we're just like, yeah, we talk mm. about things. Things don't have to be so taboo and weird. We can still be like a sweet, unassuming person and ask kind of weird questions like that because it's kind of just like curious, curiosity, if that makes sense. That's my mm. generational take mm. of the episode. <laughs> Okay. Well, you're you're closer to Gen Z than I am, so I believe you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm 17. Um, uh... I uh, I did like this line where Bert is like, "You have to jerk off once a day." The doctors say, and Dom is like, "Which doctors?" <laughs> Give me the receipts. <laughs> Which doctor says you have to empty your sack <laughs> once a day? Uh, gross. Oh, and then yeah, he's like, no girl should be exposed. Oh, this is so funny T- to an old guy's junk, and he's like, well, it's, it's, it was never. Uh, it's it's a penis on a sunset. <laughs> it's never beautiful to look. Yeah, at. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, him saying I get older and older, and the women I desire remaining young was my misogynist moment of the week. That was also my misogynist moment of the week. Uh, that was pretty gross. Pretty gross, and gross. we and it's like we know we've been now. Uh, Lucci and Mia <laughs> walk in, uh, and everyone knows what they're there for immediately. Everyone's like whores, <laughs> 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 which I would never. I would never think that. I would just. I like, don't think I would ever think that. I feel either. like they're influencers. That's what I would think. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would be like that. They're wearing what i wear <laughs> yeah exactly i feel like they're just getting a nice why would i think to call them a the whore pick. exactly i was like this doesn't check out i was like they're just like get in the shot get in this get in the, doing it for the gram who cares um and then cameron, you cameron says to yeah. ethan you don't recognize a hooker so innocent and calls him the original incel from college ethan is like no and cameron's like you could have gotten laid you're a handsome guy i'd do ya ooh foursome <laughs> But you were a workout horse and never came out of the room. And Harper says he's still like that. We must split a salad. (laughs) No fish. Ethan wants to try fish. Harper hates fish. Tries to convince him not to get it. And then I think she like, she notices the vibe. I think she like has a self-aware moment or like she's like, she's like, okay, yeah, we can just do Oh yeah, Cameron smiles and then she's like, okay, let's get the fish. Yeah. It's like, he, hmm. yeah, yeah. Which now is that she's seen his thing, he's, she'll do whatever he wants. Oh, that's an interesting take. I thought it was like she maybe. was, oh, that's, <laughs> no, maybe. No, yeah, because I was like, oh, maybe she's just like, I think it's like basically with these couples, it's like they, they are, they need, each couple needs a little of the other, basically, like in terms of traits. And so mm. I think like that's their, the, the character developments are going to be mirrored and stuff because yeah she needs to be a little looser a little less i think we're gonna see harper get looser i know i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited uh we see albie waves at portia we see portia ask oh portia eyes tanya and she mouths go to your room so portia leaves well, Albie is asking Bert concussion questions. <laughs> <laughs> the only one concerned about this 80-year-old man hitting his head. Portia heads to her room. Uh, Albie notices. Um, and then we cut to Tanya and Greg. Um, and Tanya is just like, <laughs> I love her. She's just like asking how the crazy. <laughs> She's making conversation. There were blind nuns that made the cheese. Greg does not give a shit. This marriage is, we're getting more and more info of... How much Greg sucks. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, then we got to Lucci and Mia. Um, Lucci heads off. Uh, heads off to find her client. 
uh, leaves me alone. And, and then- Valentina sees her, tries to chase her. It says, she's one fast slut. I laughed so hard. <laughs> I was like, can that be on my tombstone? I was like, she was, me that she was one fast slut. <laughs> I was, I was like that. that. I want that on a t-shirt. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean, you run. I think, yes, I do. I, I do run. Um, <laughs> that part's true. That part's true. And I'm a modern woman. Mom, don't listen to this. <laughs> uh, we cut to Portia having a relatable Bert clean keeps moment. farting. Bert keeps farting. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, we have uh, uh, just, I just noticed Portia's relatable queen moment just in her hotel room, um, stalking Albie on Instagram on her computer. Yes. I was like, this is a perfect night. Love this. Um, <laughs> we cut to Albie's room and Bert keeps farting and Albie's like, you know what? I think you're going to be fine. See you in the morning and goes <laughs> to the other room. <laughs> good call. It was a good call, Albie. Good job. Um, and then as he goes into his room, we see Lucci uh, walk, find, go into her, the room. And at first I was like, is she going to the grandpa's room? But then I was like, uh, did you think she was going to the grandpa's room at first? Am I crazy? So I saw him hooking up with people in the trailer. So I was like not surprised by this. Right. Maybe right. I kind of ruined it, but I was already expecting it to be him. Right. I don't but know it why. is I was a like, great is this, twist. Yes, yes. I was like, you shouldn't have put it in the be... trailer. I would say. That's true. That's true. Um, um, uh, we cut back to the restaurant and the piano man Giuseppe is now hitting on Mia who is alone and she's trying to ask him about work is like I'm a singer I want to write and songs and perform this job is amazing he says you have to be exceptional she's like I can play piano and he goes do I have to pay and then (laughs) how much do I need from the bank and she's like no you mistake me he assumes that she is a sex worker and she pours a drink in his face and leaves. <laughs> we um, cut to the scene so between Daphne and Cameron, and they are talking about Ethan and Harper. And Daphne's like, oh, she was more talking about the pool. And Cameron's like, now he's loaded. Do you think he regrets marrying such a dud? Oof. Oof. Yikes. Harsh, harsh. Um, and then she responds with, Cam, I want to FaceTime them again, which I thought was, like, so funny. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's... About their about, kids, she, right? About their kids, yeah. Or was it... About, um, yeah. I'm assuming, yeah, about their kids. And um, he's like, oh, no, we're in Italy. He's like, we're supposed to be together. Like, romantic, whatever. And then he does a tickle attack, which I was like, this is... I would be so mad. If someone is about to have sex with me, is like trying to seduce me, and then all of a sudden they tickle me, I'm like, what? No, this is this is the opposite of of a romantic. Um, and then we cut to the other couple um, hearing all this, and she's like, "Is he hurting her?" <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes these monkey noises. He's chasing her around, and Ethan's like, "No, but thanks for making more of an effort." They live in a bubble, but they're fun. Harper's like, "They don't vote." Ethan's like, yeah, they don't read the news. And Harper's like, they don't read. What do they talk about? Is this what happens when your brain atrophies? And Ethan says, it's good to have diverse friends. Which is so funny. And she's like, where are the diverse friends? Yeah. (laughs) Which is so funny. (laughs) Where are their white passing diverse friends? And then she says, when we came up to get the suit, he took off his clothes in the room naked. Mm-hmm. And she's trying to describe this scene to him. And he's like, that doesn't seem that weird. She didn't describe it, though, in the weirdest way. Which I was... No. Yeah. She didn't... I she was kind like, of like was like, I'm in a different room. Yeah, exactly. Room. Exactly. I was Basically. like, that was very interesting the way she... And very, very good writing, too. Because it's like, I think she's also... It's like she doesn't even want to tell him the whole... I don't know. She's like... I think she's like, the fact that she didn't say, I feel like I would tell my partner, I'd be like, I saw his butt. I would be like, he did it. He changed behind me and I saw his butt and a little of his penis. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he wears a prosthetic penis over his real penis. Can you believe that? You should check out him. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> um, but yeah, he he's she kind of couches it and then um, heads to bed. Um, oh, and he looks at the notably. face sculpture, yes. the cheating head sculpture. Cheating head mm. sculpture. Mm. We go to Tanya's room and she finds two macaroons on the table <laughs> and she hears Greg on the phone yelling at someone in the other room and then she knocks and he says, fuck. <laughs> it's like, he's not looking good. No, not looking he's good not trying. Him. And he says it's work. <laughs> Yeah, he she says shows work. him she found the two macaroons that she only ate three, and he says, "Yeah, but you had a whole panna cotta at dinner." It makes me want to die. Um, uh, mm. Such a dick, such a dick. Closes the door on her face, um, and then we cut to our last scene with Dom and Lucci um, making some conversation, um, and. Uh, he's, you know, and he says, he's like, oh, sorry, like, I'm not, my mind's not really into conversation right now. Oh, he's like, oh, something about, oh, he was like, um, you should go. She's like, I want to go to LA. And he's like, you shouldn't. She goes, I don't have money. And he goes, oh, awkward. <laughs> I'm having sex with you for uh, money. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then they, uh, they get it on. Allura. They get it on. Yeah, he says, it's hard to make convo right now because I'm going through so much. And she says, Alora. <laughs> the perfect sign off. The perfect sign off. And um, they hook up. And they hook up. And it's funny because I'm like, I'm it so It would have been my horniest moment, but I didn't see a penis. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. I. It's so funny because I feel like I've seen Christopher, uh, this actor, who plays Christopher, hook up with so many women. Yeah. I wrote here, why are you always cheating on Adriana? <laughs> <laughs> that is a fair question. <laughs> I'm like, I, I forgot she what it looks like. It. When he, yeah, he does it. Oh, God. Um, but wow, guys, this was uh, so fun. Um, I am so excited for this season. This was an amazing first episode. Sets up so many great yes. premises. I love that there is a sex worker storyline. Mm-hmm. I'm very intrigued on what is happening with the two couples. You know, Tanya's storyline, of course. She's, of course. It's not going to stay in this horrible marriage. Something's got to happen. I can't wait for Tanya to get, I don't know. I, I, I'm excited for Tanya's arc this season. Um, hopefully yes. it, it is, yeah. And it seems like they're going to do Molly in a future episode. So I'm looking forward to that. That is, oh some my God. Day trip. There's, there's tarot I saw in the promo. A we, gun. I didn't see the promo. I'm excited. Um, oh, oh, it was a very good promo. Uh, it's like they, this is the thing. They, they stole it from my, it's like they watched Juniper. They watched my movie and they're like, and Mike Wake watched it. And he was like, I should put tarot in my, in my show. And I'm like, Mike White. I think that's exactly what happened. I think he's a juniper head. <laughs> he's a big juniper a head. Juniper person. <laughs> juniper person. Oh, that's good. He's a juniper person. Uh, and he was like, "I got Showtime just to just to just to watch it." Um, but uh, yeah, so that's well, that's exciting to me. Um, yeah, Catherine, I think thank wait. you so much for waking up early in Europe oh, to do this. Thank you so much me. for staying up late. And thank you. To everyone out there for joining us on this new journey, new season. Yes, next week well, I will not be here, but we will have a guest. Um, amazing, we will have a special person. surprise she's guest. Surprise guest, she's so funny. You guys are gonna love her. Um, don't love her more than or me. Maybe though, it's not a surprise. <laughs> She's worse than Catherine, definitely. <laughs> she's way, no, she's way funnier. Um, but anyway, but uh, I am. A, thank you. I'm so excited to be doing this this season, and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope um, for those of uh, for those of you who who followed us from House of the Dragon, thank you and welcome, and tell your friends if if yes. they if they're looking for a, a, yes. a White Lotus recap pod. Tell a friend. It's you know I'm sad House of the Dragon is over, but I'm very excited to have. White Lotus back. Can't wait. Our little book club. Our, our, our TV book club. Our book club. Yay. Yeah. All right. Our new sign off is... Alora. Alora. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say it at the same time? Perfect. No, I think it, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Alora. <laughs> Alora. <laughs> that's so funny. Love you. Love you. Bye. I'm going to keep all that in. That's funny.